Hello everyone, tuning in to the live broadcast from the northern capital of Russia, St. Petersburg. Russians are trying to put something, some thought in the attack. And that's a goal from Fernando Morientes. 2006 FA Cup. And he scores! Dmitry Sechov, the absolute striking machine. Широков, крутой, хоть, хоть и бурчит, как бабка старая всегда, но пасе дает, конечно, шикарный. But tell me, that, that, that game against Belgium was boring though, isn't it? Come on. Look, Ma, I can actually play around with the stadium. There's a button right here, I press it. My word. Oh my God, I'm so jealous of this guy. <laughs> Hello, Raw Takers. Today, the vlog takes us to the northern capital of Russia, St. Petersburg, one of the 11 host cities of Euro 2020 next year. What this city has in store, I'm here to find out. Come on. I have to say, this city of St. Petersburg actually breaks a lot of stereotypes. First of all, that Russia is a cold country. It is June, but it's plus 32 centigrade. It's blazing hot. So the only way to escape this kind of thing is to get on a boat and sail down the canals. It's literally like, what, 10 quid for a trip. But it's pretty damn interesting. And it's also life-saving in terms of breeze coming in your face. Hopefully next year when the Euros come here it will be just a little colder because this is just way too hot. Touch the bridge. Honestly, I don't know what's more annoying, the blazing heat in St. Petersburg or the voice of the tour guide on the boat, but all these negativities are nothing compared to the sights you can get in this city. I mean, it's incredible. It's the Venice of the North and you can travel on the boat every day, 20 times a day and enjoy the sights of the city. St. Petersburg is only like 300 years old, but literally it's probably the most historic city in Russia you would find. Every single building around here just breathes history. If you're not looking for football, you're looking for history. That's the thing. Now my first stop in the Russian northern capital is the St. Petersburg's International Economic Forum, which grows every year. Now you may ask yourself, what the bloody hell a sports reporter doing at an International Economic Forum? The reason I am here is this. This is the stand of the Euro 2020. Well, next year it's going to be held in 11 cities across the continent. Amsterdam, Bucharest, London, Glasgow, Rome and St. Petersburg. So I want to check it out. Now that brings back really, really good memories. I'm not sure that was the game against Spain, where Russia knocked Spain out of the World Cup. But obviously this man was a hero last year. Whether he's going to become one next year in St. Petersburg, we'll see. But definitely this brings back good memories for every Russian. These are the boots 
of the only goalkeeper in the history of football to ever win the Ballon d'Or, Lev Yashin of USSR. My idol, the idol of, I would say, pretty much every Russian who ever had a connection to football. And these are the boots he played in, legendary. It's not only the boots of Yashin which are on display here, so it's also the jersey from uh, the Summer Olympics in Melbourne 1956 where USSR won gold. Now also the iconic hat which uh, Lev Yashin used to wear. I mean you cannot imagine this man without a hat, he even played games in it. Uh, gold, 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 all the stuff that the USSR won back in the days 1988-1956. Uh, this is obviously the Ballon d'Or, as it was known back in 1963. I mean, these days it's much, much bigger, and it's a big intrigue who we're gonna get it this year. My vote is for Virgil van Dijk of Liverpool, but we'll see. But that's how Ballon d'Or looked back in the days, and Yashin is still the only goalkeeper in world history to claim the big prize. But this is the main attraction, clearly. Somebody will lift it next year. Now, obviously they said you can look, but you cannot touch. Fair enough. I mean, as much as I want to touch it, only those who deserve to lift this above the head in London next year in 2020 will do so. But here you go, ladies and gentlemen, the European Cup of Champions. But I have to tell you though, I'm not trying to be condescending or anything, but I just, just came back from Madrid where I saw the mighty Jordan Henderson, the skipper of Liverpool FC, raising the big ears at Stadio Wanda Metropolitano. And I have to say the, the, champ, the UEFA Champions League Cup slightly bigger than this one but maybe it has to be like that I mean it has to be a slightly more compact because I mean Champions League lasts almost the whole year and Euros only last for a month but it's still a feast of football now England fans do remember a cheeky penalty by Andrea Pirlo at the semi-final of Euro 2012 championship but actually Antonin Panenka did the same thing in the final of the Euros in 1976, legendary penalty, you know, the chip sending the goalkeeper the wrong way and putting it into the net. Michel Platini over there, uh, not the most popular man these days, yet he led France to its first Euro victory in 1984. Oh, the Greek champions. I mean, who expected that? If you're old enough to remember the 2004, my God, that was spectacular. Well, you know these guys, right? He just won the World Cup. This guy won the Champions League last year, now back to Real Madrid. But back in 2000, they were lifting that trophy, which we just saw above their heads in uh, the 2000 Euros. And then obviously 96 Germany, the double decker from Spain in 2008 and tw uh, 2012, the golden generation of Spanish football. Also World Cup in between, if you remember 2010, but this brings us to 2016 Portugal. A very, very, very unexpected win on the home ground of France against France. And of course, at the Euro 2020 stand, who you see, this is Alexei Sorokin. He ran the organization committee for the World Cup in 2018. Obviously did a great job and now is in charge of making 2020 Euro in St. Petersburg happen as well. I mean, obviously he's surrounded by the press. Look at all of them, such a, such a huge hype. But I will try to speak to him eye to eye, you know. Вопрос такой, вот сейчас запустилась такая важная история, как волонтерская программа. Насколько вот этот сегмент волонтерства был важен для чемпионата мира в прошлом году. И насколько можно повторить этот успех в следующем году на Евро? Он был ошеломляюще важен. Потому что мы, мы не раз говорили о том, что гости, официальные лица, команда, они не видят организаторов. Может, счастье, может, сожаление, не видят волонтеров. Волонтеры представляют собой гораздо большую, большую армию э, хозяев, в широком смысле этого слова, чем, чем организаторы. Они численно превосходят 20 раз примерно оргкомитеты. Они встречают, они провожают, они везде, в каждом месте, которое так или иначе связано с проведением любого турнира. 
Ну, конечно, в основном зависит от, от волонтеров качество проведения, тех впечатлений, которые гости получают от, от любого турнира. И здесь футбол не является исключением. Saint Petersburg is not only a beautiful city in the north, it's also the city of the reigning champions of Russian Football League, Zenit Saint Petersburg. And they even have a stand. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Follow me, follow me. Now, not so long ago, I actually had an exclusive interview with Sardar Azmun, who just transferred to Zenit in January. And this thing now belongs to him. He was just sitting there in the chair and saying, I really want to win the title with uh, Zenit. Now it belongs to him. Champions of Russia. 2019 and that is the place obviously where the Euro 2020, 2020 games will be held next year the Gazprom Arena fascinating stadium which looks like a UFO if you're standing next to it there's one little downside though if you're a press worker and you have to traverse through the media zones and the mix zones and the, and the pitch side it takes a little bit of walking but you can say it's a cardio workout it's you know it's good at sport after all But nonetheless, it's a beautiful stadium and four games next year will be held here. I wonder though if uh, Zenit will keep the cup when the Euro 2020 kicks off in Russia's northern capital. Now this makeshift model of the stadium also shows the retractable pitch. Look at here. The pitch moves into there and then it's inside the stadium. And if it's a concert inside the stadium, it's rolled out and uh, nobody can harm the actual grass and have fun inside the stadium right there. Also, the Baltic weather is pretty severe for a pitch, so sometimes it just has to be rolled out to bask in the sun. And it also has a roof, a also retractable roof. Look, Ma, I can actually play around with the stadium. There's a button right here, I press it. Look, 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 magic, magic is happening, look. The roof retracts. And if there's a rain or snow, you'll still be able to play or enjoy a concert inside the stadium. Look at that, look at that, it's going in, it's going in. Probably the game is about to start. The concert is over, the beer cans have been removed from the floor, and the pitch is moving back in. I have to say, this is pretty damn creative. Now everyone who's ever been to St. Petersburg knows how beautiful and absolutely unique the city is. So it should make little wonder about how the city exactly decided to present its Euro 2020 campaign. Now just look at that, right? It's right on the banks of the mighty Neva River with a beautiful scenery with all the golden domes, columns and everything St. Petersburg has to offer. And then we turn right here And that is a football park with a football pitch where a match of legends will be played. And I will have a little surprise for you. Make sure you watch until the end of the vlog. And I'm also told that a couple of big stars are in attendance today. Let's check it out. So obviously, as in every football park I've like seen last year, you can test your skills. Old fart coming to test his old skills. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna fail so bad at this. Okay, the lower ones are done. А рекорд какой? 20 секунд это, 20 секунд это нереально. And look who we have here. World Cup winner. 
two-time UEFA Champions League winner, former France and Real Madrid, Christian Carambeau. You see a lot of hype journalists around asking him questions. But as it usually happens, Raw Take is going to talk to him eye to eye. Come on. Christian, Yes. we are now in St. Petersburg. Yes. Good memories for you, right? Beautiful memories because, of course, we were... Where is the stadium? That way. That way. We were there, we beat uh, Belgium and to give us the opportunity to play the final in Moscow after in Lusny. And uh, so far, it's a beautiful architecture also, this uh, beautiful stadium. And what a landscape. Naneva. But tell me, that, that, that game against Belgium was boring though, isn't it? Come on. It was boring. Everybody said France is sucking life out of football. Uh, you know, it's, it's the way. You know, there's two steps. Semi-final, final. Doesn't matter tactics, doesn't matter. You need to win. Fair enough. Fair enough. I agree. I agree with that. So now you're here to open the football park. True. Uh, do you hope that France Come back again, Come back again. with a good luck city, right? Yes, it is. Quarterfinal. We play semi final there, one of the quarterfinal here. And again, win and get far. But we, we cannot final. also forget the, the performance of the Russian performance. They have done very well uh, against Croatia. And Croatia was fatherless against France. So uh, I think they need to reconsider their performance because they have done very well. They lost only on penalties. So uh, there is a good team. And we hope that Russia can go further to be qualified and to hope, why not? I don't know if they can play the, uh, the, uh, the quarterfinal here, I don't know. Possibly. It's still, it's still in the works, I think. But, you know, I saw what was happening in this country. I'm a Russian. Yes. I've never seen people so much enthused about football and the national team. Because be ahead of the tournament, everyone said, like, Russia is not going to do anything. They're, they're bad, this shit. Like, no, they're not going to do anything. But when it happened, they went into the quarterfinals. It was amazing. The streets were crazy. True. When you I came saw back, that. When I saw that. you saw that you were here. When you came back to France, yes. how was it there after winning the World Cup? You know that we, when you won, again, it's a dream come true for uh, the players. But for us, it's like uh, we achieved something enrichable because once we have done, we didn't believe it. The second one, the second stars, it's like wow, it's true, we can do it again. So it's good for the new generation, and this generation was on the street, they were there. From our generation to the new one, they were all blue. They were all in the street. All monument was blue, uh, bleu blanc rouge, and so on. So this is also uh, power of sport to unite people together for the same goal mm -hmm. and same victory. And victory, the celebration in France is like the victory when we were victories for the war. The same mm. flowers, spreads, uh, <laughs> sharing together scenes, eh? the emotion. Yes, hanging each other, crying, full of emotion. This is football, this is sport. Have you met uh, Desham after the World Cup win? Of course. What was the first thing you told him? I know that they will win, but of course not. After I went to uh, celebrate with him, because so to congratulate him and his team, because he transmitted to them this DNA, this philosophy to win again. Because he part of our generation, and he gave that uh, to the new generation. And for us, it's, a, it's fulfilled also our dream that we have done something, we transmitted for the new generation and they have fulfilled again something that uh, could never imagine. But again, we have done this and it's great because it's still, still open to the other generation. We can give back to them. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck on St. Petersburg. Cannot do without drums and beats in the musical city of St. Petersburg and obviously flags of every Euro nation which will be coming here for Euro 2020. Now the opening ceremony is about to begin. Come on. It's not too bad to be on the bench right now. The opening ceremony of the football park right here in St. Petersburg. Presenting every city, every nation that will be hosting the Euro 2020. I think for me, being in Russia, uh, through the World Cup, was an amazing experience. 
И я считаю, что Россия должна быть очень горда тем, чего она достигла и что она показала. There's always a lot of stereotypical ideas about Russia. А в мире существует много стереотипов относительно России. I think those were banished with the World Cup. И я думаю, что они исчезли после чемпионата мира. So I feel excited about the heroes. И я действительно испытываю очень большие ожидания. Because I know Russia will do an amazing job. Потому что я знаю, что Россия выполнит прекрасную, великолепную работу. And so now I'm back to the northern capital of St. Petersburg after a short break. And today I'm going to be doing something very, very special. Follow me, I'll show you what it is. Now today in St. Petersburg there will be a match of legends. Those are five big names from all over the world and five big names from Russia. And your humble servant will be right here commentating the game to global audiences in English. So I've already been explained, although do I need to be explained, I've done this before. This is the screen where she's going to show the game, here's the game, it's going to be taking place right here. I have a mute button, I have my microphone and earphones, and the people who will be taking to this field, you all know those names. There are World Cup winners, there are Euros winners, there are Champions League winners, and those are big, big name footballers. The interesting question is whether the Russians will be able to put up something against them. But I'm pretty sure that those Russians know their stuff and they will do well. Come on! So the teams are on the pitch. Now you can see, this is the Russian side, the guys in red. Vladislav Radimov, Mikhail Kerzakov, Dmitry Sechov over there. There we have Roman Shirokov. And boom, what a great goal by Dinyar Bililidinov, who used to play for Everton. And actually he scored goal of the season against Manchester United. So on the other side, obviously, the world stars. So we have Fernando Morientes right there, Gianluca Zambrota. We have Robert Perez, David Rezegui, and Alexander Filimonov, actually a Russian bloke, in between the sticks. We are one minute away. Hello everyone, tuning in to the live broadcast from the northern capital of Russia, St. Petersburg. Now you may ask yourself, what is whole football thing about here? But, in exactly one year from today, the Euro 2020 tournament will kick off. I am your host and commentator, Alexei Yaroshevsky, host of the show on RT, Raw Take. I'll be with you for the Legends game. Now this, this is an absolutely amazing lineup. I can see a true Russian legend, Dmitry Sachov, smiling at me right now. So these guys, most of them have retired recently. Uh, some of them are still actually playing, as I've mentioned before. But they definitely got what it takes to put on a high intensity game. Pretty close. Well done, Dmitry. For the ball again, that hits the woodwork, very similar to what Mohamed Salah did against Barcelona in the first game at Camp Nou in the Champions League semi-final this year. Russians are trying to put something, some thought in the attack, and that's a goal from Fernando Morientes. Scramble in the box of the Russian team. Perez again now is on the ball, passing it to Gianluca Zamrota. Now Perez with the ball. Intercepted by Shirokov, passing to Sichov. Sichov is on the attack. That is a good shot. by Dinyar Oh, that was... Another tap-in. Another poacher's goal from the Arsenal legend. Le Bleu legend as well. It's 4-2 to the UEFA team. 2020's anniversary tournament kicks off across the continent and St. Petersburg. And Russians are still having a lot of hope they can equalize at the very least. But Trezeguet is now on the ball to quash these hopes. Beautiful game in the beautiful city of St. Petersburg. And precision! The absolute sniper right here. Raman Shirokov, Zenith legend. Here in St. Petersburg, he is the legend. He won the UEFA Cup in 2008 and the Super Cup 
I have to say that passing in this game has been nothing short of fantastic. Most of the goals scored so far are tap-ins. But in order to score a tap-in, not only you have to be there, but you also have to receive a pinpoint and very accurate pass. And Kerzhakov is doing a fantastic job as a keeper again. He is not the kind of guy who's going to stand in the shadow of his stellar brother. Has a chance to equalize Trezeguet in an absolutely cracking fashion. It's one minute left and it's 16 all. One minute remaining. Who will come out as a winner in this fantastic game? As many of these players have scored in their careers. Russia, 16. UEFA team, 16. Excellent game here in St. Petersburg. 32 goals in 40 minutes. But now the game goes into penalties. And these goalkeepers are, both of them are absolute colossuses. Alexander Filimonov is 195. Go. The first one to take the penalty is David Trezeguet for UEFA team. And top corner, David Trezeguet. It is a golazo, 1-0. UEFA team leads on penalties. Raman Siroko does the same, but in the other corner, beautiful shot, very intense and very tense. Gabriel Perez on the ball. And Gerzakov. The local hero, Mitri Sechov, for the win. Come on, Mitri. And he scores! Mitri Sechov, the absolute striking machine, makes no mistake from the penalty spot. And it's four to Russia, three to UEFA Legends team on penalties after 32 goals between them in the regulation time. Congratulations, Russia has won. I wish I could say this more often. The CEO of UEFA event, Martin Callan, who I spoke to last week. Thank you for being with us. Hopefully, it's the first of many, and we'll see you next year at the Euros all across the European continent. Bye bye. So now we're on the pitch, right after the game concluded. Look at this guy. This is the mascot. Skillsy, can you show something, please? I, I'm told you are like a fantastic Skillsy guy. Look at him. My word. My God, I'm so jealous of this guy. <laughs> Whoa! Skillsy, that's fantastic, honestly. How, you don't talk right, I know. How many years did it take you to learn all this? Years, just show me. Three, four, five. Five years, and now you can do this. Cool guy. I'll see you next year at the Euros, eh? Top man. <laughs> Being this close to the guys who want so much, it's just a dream come true, honestly. This guy right here, he won the UEFA, the UEFA Champions League three times, but to me, more importantly, he won the FA Cup with Liverpool back in 2006, Fernando Morientes. Fantastic performance today, so many top of the tier goals, but now he's just taking all these pictures with the kids, absolutely excited kids. An absolute legend of world football. Gianluca Zamrota won the World Cup in 2006, obviously. I mean, he scored the golden goal at the Euros in 2000. Assisted by, where is he? As Robert Perez is on the other side right there. So he was, he was, he provided the assist back then to David Rezeguer, essentially scoring the golden goal, winning the Euros for Le Bleu. But now they play together and they lost against Russia. Bueno, será un formato nuevo que no estamos acostumbrados. Creo que tendrá la posibilidad de darle un fútbol de alto nivel a ciertos países que por ahí no están acostumbrados a ver este tipo de evento. 
Seguramente que las conclusiones las sacaremos al final de la competición, pero creo que es una idea interesante. En, to en todos estos cambiamientos en el fútbol, es verdad que bueno, esta Eurocopa será algo diferente, habrá que adaptarse, pero creo que será una fiesta inolvidable para todos. Это действительно новый формат, к которому никто пока не привык, но он сможет подарить странам, у которых нет большого опыта проведения таких матчей, футбол высокого уровня. Выводы можно делать уже после того, как чемпионат закончится, однако сама по себе идея интересна. И эти изменения в современном футболе, в том числе и в проведении чемпионата Европы, они требуют некоторой адаптации, к ним нужно притереться, но я думаю, что получится неплохо. No way. Nice. 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 <laughs> 2006 FA Cup. Bueno, creo que va a ser un, un gran espectáculo, sobre todo porque eh, el evento lo merece, es un evento eh, excepcional. La ciudad creo que es espectacular y UEFA siempre organiza grandes torneos, o sea que yo creo que todo el mundo espera un, un gran campeonato. Мне кажется, это будут потрясающие матчи, настоящие спектакли, и это будет заслуженно так, потому что это восхитительный город, и потому что УЕФА всегда организовывает все на высшем уровне, поэтому я думаю, что все без исключения будут ждать этих матчей. Я тебя поздравляю. Вообще, слушай, победили, это же прекрасно. Я тебе говорил, в прошлом году комментировал э, в Калининграде матч. Такой же? Такой же матч легенд, то есть сборная России против сборной мира. Там Кафу играл, Кану, знаешь, такие серьезные чуваки. Эти тоже крутые, правда, Это эти не серьезные? Ну нет, эти очень серьезные. Я потом говорю, что таких победите, знаешь, дорогого стоит. Нет, очень-очень круто, очень круто, потому что оказаться в такой компании, это просто какая-то мечта. И мы в прошлом году играли здесь на конюшены. Там был Роналдиньо, Акоча, Десаи, но тоже. То есть Поэтому... те, по сути, на ком ты рос, да? Как он да, смысле? конечно, на кого смотрел, там золотые голы, там Тразеге, там Перес, Замброты, Кубок мира выиграл. Ну просто, и ты играешь с ними 5 на 5, тут возишь их, забиваешь их голы. Ты сегодня нормально, кстати, возил. Да, буду всем рассказывать тебе. 7 забил, там Замброту между проверил. И он меня тоже и проверил. Семь забил в итоге. Да, да. Слушай, я просто комментировал, поэтому я не мог считать просто физически. Ну, я думаю, такое мне еще напомнили, да. Я тебе потом скину кусочек трансляции, где я там, знаешь, кричу просто «Свечев! Абсолют машин!» Не, веселая, веселая, веселая игра. Очень. Мы в чем бескомпромиссная, тут не было никаких подавков. Играли просто. Пришлось подышать прилично, потому что там ребята тоже в форме. Хоть они и постарше нас чуть-чуть. Ну, чуть-чуть. Совсем чуть-чуть. Вы еще молоды, что вы? <смех> Слушай, с кем сегодня самая вот лучшая сыгранность у тебя была в команде нашей? Ну, конечно, с Беллидином. С Билли, да? да. Вы играли вместе? Ну, да. Выиграли. Ну, плюс тут все такие мастера, и пас отдать Широков, хоть, хоть, хоть и бурчит, как бабка старая всегда, но ну, пас отдает, конечно, <смех> шикарный. <смех> ну, слушай, ну, он был, был, он был бы не Широков, если бы не бурчал, как мы, мы же все знаем. <смех> да, мы привыкли уже. Ну, в общем, ты получил полное наслаждение. Полное, полный экстаз, победу. конечно. Что думаешь, у нас как шансы на Евро? Шансы, я думаю, мы должны Бельгию все-таки хлопнуть дома и с первого места выйти. Я думаю, сейчас нет непобедимых команд. Франция показала, что и Францию можно обыграть, и чемпионов мира, поэтому нет ничего серьезного. Тем более осень, мы будем уже в другой форме, еще более лучше и только, только вперед. То вчера просто очень многие гундели, что типа всего лишь 1-0, ну, с Кейпором, знаешь, так. После, после 9-0, я думаю, каждый будет гундеть. 10 Если... голов двух матчей, да, люди да, все да. равно гундят. Ну как так можно вообще? Это наша понимать? страна, это наша Россия. У нас, у нас требовательная публика. <laughs> Чересчур. Дим, очень рад тебя видеть в Питере. В следующем году, я думаю, здесь обязательно увидимся много раз. Обязательно. Спасибо тебе большое. Из победы прям. Да. Пеналь последний прям. Класс! In just one year time, Euros 2020 will be held all across the continent and 11 cities. St. Petersburg is one of them. And just make sure you make it here because this city is absolutely gorgeous. Don't you think? In the meantime, I shall be back with Raw Take next week. Come on.